Have you ever wondered why heart disease is still the number one killer, despite millions of prescriptions filled for cholesterol-lowering wonder drugs and the promotion of cholesterol-lowering strategies as a main tool for fighting it? Perhaps our understanding of the causes of this disease has been incorrect. If so, as long as we don't understand its true nature, we cannot develop effective means to prevent or treat it. In this presentation, we present a compelling new understanding of the origin of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease, the cause of heart attacks and strokes, based on creative thinking and an analysis of the scientific facts. We will discuss the following aspects. What is cardiovascular disease? What is the current conventional understanding of cardiovascular disease? We will address the need for a new rationale explaining the causes of heart disease since the current concept fails to answer key questions in cardiology. We will present a new concept which shifts our focus from risk factors in the blood, the cholesterol, to newly understood factors which affect the strength and integrity of the artery wall. You will then understand why vitamin C and a specific lipoprotein, lipoprotein A, become the keys to solving the cardiovascular epidemic. We will then conclude with the wider implications of this new understanding. Cardiovascular disease, the single most deadly disease worldwide, is a disorder of the heart and blood vessels. It encompasses a number of conditions affecting the structures and function of the heart, many of which are related to a process called atherosclerosis. Its key feature is a gradual hardening and narrowing of the arteries, which increases the risk of blocking the blood flow in the arteries of the heart, of the arteries providing the blood to the brain, thereby causing heart attacks and strokes. Let us compare the new understanding of human cardiovascular disease with the existing conventional theory that is widely promoted in the media and embraced by today's medicine and medical practice. According to this outdated and inadequate paradigm, high levels of cholesterol circulating in the blood damage the inside of the blood vessel walls. As a result, fat transporting molecules primarily low-density lipoproteins, LDL, enter and deposit cholesterol and other fat molecules inside these walls. Based on this rationale, the process of depositing fat-transporting molecules in the artery walls serves no biological purpose and is essentially an arbitrary or random fatalistic event. Moreover, the development of arteriosclerotic plaques is considered to be essentially irreversible. In contrast, our new understanding shows that the first initialising event in the process of atherosclerosis is the structural impairment of the artery wall, which is the result of a long-term deficiency of a specific vitamin in our diet. As a consequence of this structural impairment, the body initiates a biological repair process. This biological repair involves the depositing of intact lipoprotein A particles inside the weakest areas of the arteries. The depositing of these molecules primarily protects against blood loss similar to that which occurs during vitamin C deficiency and scurvy. In other words, arteriosclerosis is not an arbitrary development but serves a distinct biological purpose. 
mending the injuries to the arteries and preventing fatal blood loss. In addition, the formation of arteriosclerotic plaques is in principle reversible by an optimum dietary intake of micronutrients. Let's take a closer look at the conventional theory of cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a type of arteriosclerosis, a general term for the thickening and hardening of arteries. It is a potentially serious condition in which a complex material called plaque builds up inside the walls of the arteries. This build-up makes it harder for blood to flow through the arteries. At the initial stage, fatty streaks develop between the intima and the media of the artery wall. Consequently, the arterial wall thickens and a complex structure, a plaque, develops, covered by a thick fibrous shell. As a result, the artery narrows, reducing the blood flow in the vessel thus decreasing the oxygen supply to the heart. Such plaques carry a risk of completely blocking the artery or they can rupture, generating a blood clot. Arterial thrombosis is the clotting of blood which begins at the site of the plaque rupture. In this case, the body mobilizes blood platelets thrombocytes and a protein, fibrin, to form a blood clot to mend the damage and prevent fatal blood loss. If a blood clot forms, it can stop the blood flow to the heart muscle or the brain. This can cause a heart attack or stroke. If the blood clot enlarges to completely block the artery, all the tissues supplied with oxygen and nutrients by that artery begin to die below the blockage. The following slides depict the chain of events based on the conventional rationale of cardiovascular disease that lead to fatty streak development and atherosclerosis. Understanding what is the first and key event in the development of atherosclerosis is critical for developing effective means to prevent and control this process. Conventional medicine considers atherosclerosis as a random event that starts with the damage of specialized cells, endothelial cells that line our arteries. It begins as a malfunction of this thin layer of cells that form an interface between circulating blood and the vessel wall. It is important to note that while both the conventional and our new understanding of atherosclerosis are strongly related to the inner arterial wall, the explanation of the initiating mechanisms causing the damage to the endothelium differ in these approaches. The current dogma of cardiovascular disease considers cholesterol-carrying molecules, primarily low-density lipoproteins, LDL in the bloodstream as damaging factors to the endothelial cells of the blood vessel wall. However, since the blood levels of cholesterol are the same throughout the blood vessel system, this concept does not explain why we don't get infarctions in all organs of our body at the same rate, but mainly in the heart or brain. On top of that, about 50% of heart attack victims do not have elevated cholesterol blood levels, but every single person with atherosclerosis has endothelial dysfunction. The second and third stages of atherosclerosis are characterized by an increased influx of cholesterol inside the arteries. Following the alleged damage by cholesterol, the endothelium becomes more permeable to fat-transporting molecules, LDL, and the vascular wall building smooth muscle cells starts to migrate to the underlying layer, the intima. As a result, LDL particles penetrate the vascular wall and deposit in the intima where they are prone to oxidation. 
fourthly, damaged endothelial cells respond by attracting white blood cells, monocytes, from the bloodstream, which, by entering the blood vessel wall, begin to eat up the abundantly deposited cholesterol. At this fifth stage of atherosclerosis, monocytes, which entered the arterial walls, transform into police cells, macrophages, which absorb oxidized LDL molecules and transform into foam cells. Conglomerates of foam cells form fatty streaks, yellow patches visible in the arterial wall. Eventually, as the conventional theory maintains, the macrophages overeat and burst, releasing free cholesterol and other molecules, thereby forming pools of destruction within the arterial wall. Stimulated by various signal molecules, cytokines, smooth muscle cells from the muscular layer of the artery wall multiply and migrate, forming a fibrous cap covering the lipid centre, the atherosclerotic plaque. This construct becomes a mature plaque. It protrudes into the arterial lumen, grows slowly and may finally obstruct the artery. Eventually, the fibrous cap might rupture, leading to undesirable consequences such as the formation of a thrombus at the site of plaque rupture. This blood clot can block the blood flow in the vessel, causing heart attacks or strokes. A heart attack occurs when the blood flow to a part of the heart muscle is blocked by a blood clot. If this clot cuts off the blood flow completely, the part of the heart muscle supplied by that artery begins to die. A stroke is caused by a blockage that develops in the arteries supplying blood to the brain. When the blood supply to part of the brain is shut off, the affected brain cells will die. This diagram summarizes the various steps of atherosclerosis based on the antiquated medical view. One. LDL cholesterol allegedly damages the endothelial cells. 2. LDL particles penetrate the vascular wall. 3. Foam cells are formed inside the wall. 4. Atherosclerotic plaque advances. 5. Plaque disruption occurs. 6. A thrombus is formed. and 7. Heart attack or stroke occurs. The conventional theory of cardiovascular disease cannot adequately predict or explain some of the basic aspects in cardiology. Therefore, how is one supposed to accept and embrace a scientific rationale for the cause of cardiovascular disease if it cannot provide answers to some basic medical questions? Let's have a closer look at some of these medical puzzles which the current theory of cardiovascular disease can't explain. Let's start with the first puzzle. High blood cholesterol is evenly distributed in the arteries and veins of the 60,000 miles, which is 100,000 kilometers, long vascular system of the human body. Therefore, if cholesterol truly damages the blood vessels, we would inevitably develop atherosclerotic deposits all along our blood vessel system and not primarily in a very small spot, namely the coronary arteries of the heart, which are about 30 centimetres in length. Therefore, if cholesterol is really the damaging factor, we would develop infarctions in our ears, nose, and all other organs at the same rate, not just in the heart. Furthermore, Atherosclerotic plaques would not be limited to the arteries but would also develop in our veins. Therefore, these obstructions of blood flow would have to occur at the same rate in arteries and in veins. This is clearly not the case. While arteriosclerosis is common, venosclerosis is practically unknown. 
This observation similarly excludes cholesterol as the primary culprit of cardiovascular disease. In other words, basic human logic already excludes high cholesterol as the primary cause of heart attacks and strokes. Here's another puzzle. Animals that sleep through the winter, hibernators, have extremely high blood cholesterol levels. For instance, bears can have 400 milligrams of cholesterol per deciliter of blood. If high cholesterol levels really damage the artery walls, thereby initiating atherosclerosis, these animals would have been extinct long ago. We are not claiming that animals do not suffer from heart disease. However, atherosclerosis in animals is the exception. As is stated in one veterinary manual, if a conclusive explanation can be found for the low prevalence of heart disease among animals, it may cast a useful light on its occurrence in humans. Despite inadequate scientific and logical validation, the conventional thinking of cardiovascular disease has been serving as the basis for an over $30 billion market in cholesterol-lowering drugs. These huge medical expenses are burdening the people of the world and strangulating economies without really solving the heart disease problem. Therefore, it is essential that we revise our current thinking and either enrich the current understanding of cardiovascular disease with new aspects or replace it with a paradigm that can adequately explain these medical puzzles and enable the developing of effective solutions to this urgent problem. In summary, there are both scientific and economic reasons why conventional thinking about the origins of cardiovascular disease has to be urgently replaced. The new understanding of cardiovascular disease proposed by Dr. Matthias Rath with support from two-time Nobel laureate Linus Pauling can solve the previously mentioned puzzles of cardiology. Let's see how. According to this progressive concept, cardiovascular disease is an early form of scurvy, a pathological condition caused by a chronic lack of vitamin C in our body. Here's how it develops. The long-term vitamin deficiencies initiate structural impairment of the artery wall, embodied by millions of tiny cracks and lesions. Subsequently, fat transporting molecules primarily lipoprotein A instead of LDL, enter the artery walls and are deposited there, functioning as repair molecules. The depositing of this large lipoprotein in the weakened areas of the blood vessel walls serves a distinct biological purpose, compensating for the structural impairment of the vascular wall, thereby preventing fatal blood loss. Before we come back with specifics on the new understanding of cardiovascular disease, we will summarise the preparatory steps that laid the foundation for this new paradigm. Two decades ago, during the 1990s, Dr Matthias Rath and Linus Pauling published this revolutionary understanding of cardiovascular disease in a prestigious scientific journal the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America. This publication stated that atherosclerosis is an early form of scurvy and that lipoprotein A is a repair molecule that works as a functional surrogate for vitamin C in the impaired vascular wall. This concept was elaborated based on earlier clinical findings published by Dr. Rath and his colleagues that lipoprotein A, not LDL, is the primary component of human atherosclerotic plaques. In 2010, more than two decades after these initial publications, the European Atherosclerosis Society recognised the significance of the lipoprotein A molecule and recommended screening for elevated LPA levels. Hence, lipoprotein A has officially been recognised as the primary risk factor for all known forms of cardiovascular disease. 
Lipoprotein A is now considered to be a leading independent risk factor for coronary artery disease and heart attacks, for cerebrovascular disease and strokes, for peripheral vascular disease, for restenosis after bypass surgery and angioplasty, as well as for other cardiovascular conditions. However, while lipoprotein A is now firmly established as a leading risk factor for human cardiovascular disease, the significance of this unique molecule is still not well understood. In 2015, scientists at the Dr. Rath Research Institute in California published a groundbreaking study in the American Journal of Cardiovascular Disease, proving that heart disease is an early form of the vitamin C deficiency disease scurvy and confirmed the role of lipoprotein A in this process. The following conclusions can be drawn from this study. The depletion of dietary ascorbate, vitamin C, leads to LPA accumulation in the vascular wall and parallels atherosclerotic lesion development. Dietary deficiency of ascorbate increases serum levels of LPA. Vitamin C supplementation can prevent atherosclerosis. In order to shift from the old to the new understanding of the origins of heart disease, several modifications of the current concept are required. The following slides illustrate the various steps, according to the new thinking, that explain what triggers the changes in the artery wall which lead to fatty streak development and atherosclerosis. The following topics will be addressed. 1. The role of micronutrient deficiency. 2. Endothelial dysfunction in relation to decreased collagen production. 3. The depositing of repair molecules in blood vessels, mainly LPA. And 4. The consequences of an overshooting repair mechanism. The first and key event in the development of atherosclerosis is the dysfunction of the endothelium, the thin layer of cells that lines the interior surface of the blood vessels, which forms an interface between circulating blood and the vessel wall. We've already discussed how the prevailing dogma of cardiovascular disease claims that endothelial dysfunction is caused by elevated blood levels of cholesterol-carrying molecules primarily low-density lipoproteins, LDL, that damage the endothelial cells of the blood vessel wall. However, the new theory of cardiovascular disease introduces a new explanation for endothelial dysfunction and atherosclerosis. Based on this new understanding, endothelial dysfunction is associated with decreased collagen production and is primarily caused by inadequate supplies of micronutrients, in particular vitamin C. If the vitamin C supply to the cells drops below the amount necessary for optimal function of the endothelial cells, and the production of collagen in the basement membrane in the intima, the first layer of the artery that the bloodstream encounters, this inevitably causes vascular instability and increases the gaps between the endothelial cells. In other words, long-term deficiency of micronutrients, in particular vitamin C, causes structural weakness of the blood vessel wall and facilitates the development of biological cracks that need repairing. This deficiency is primarily manifested at those sites of our cardiovascular system that are exposed to the highest mechanical stress, the coronary arteries of the heart. Therefore, cardiovascular disease does not start with elevated blood cholesterol levels that allegedly damage the artery walls. On the contrary, atherosclerosis starts with vitamin deficiencies which cause increased gaps between endothelial cells and structural impairment of the connective tissue in the artery walls. This process is independent of cholesterol blood levels. When dietary vitamin deficiency continues for a longer time, with the imminent development of scurvy, our body initiates a compensation strategy. 
it starts to deposit repair molecules in the blood vessel walls. These are predominantly the lipoprotein A molecules, which help to mend the structural inadequacies and prevent fatal blood loss, an inevitable endpoint of scurvy. The extracellular matrix binding all cells together in the intima and in the middle layer of the artery wall, known as the media, cannot be maintained and rebuilt without enough vitamin C. Therefore, during vitamin C deficiency, the normal cell-to-cell -cell barrier of the endothelium becomes porous and leaky, allowing the repair molecules fibrinogen and lipoprotein A to enter the artery wall through the widening intercellular gaps. Fibrinogen and lipoprotein A bind to the damaged and loosened extracellular matrix elements, preventing further erosion of the artery wall and fatal blood loss. There are also metabolic consequences. More and more lipoprotein A and fibrinogen are produced in the liver and released into the bloodstream in response to increasing demands for these molecules and a response to inflammatory cytokine signals emitted by cells damaged by vitamin C deficiency. Other repair molecules that are deposited inside the blood vessel walls or can increase its stability include other fat carrying lipoprotein molecules such as LDL, carbohydrates, sugars, which can cross-link protein structures, and blood clotting coagulation factors. So to summarize, atherosclerosis is not an arbitrary development, but the result of a biological regulatory process, which aims at protecting the vascular walls against blood loss. If this repair mechanism lasts for too long, it overshoots, leading to the development of atherosclerotic plaques, and clogging of the coronary arteries, which might result in a heart attack. The following slides focus on the repair process and the consequences of an overshooting repair mechanism. But before we continue, we will provide a short description of the major blood lipoproteins. Lipoproteins are biological vehicles that transport and deliver fat to the different organs and tissues. Lipids, oil-soluble substances such as fat and cholesterol, can't dissolve in the blood and do not travel through the body by themselves, but must be transported in the bloodstream by carriers with a good affinity to the watery part of the blood. Therefore, lipid moiety combines with a protein component forming lipoproteins, which owe their name to the fact that they are composed of fat, lipid and proteins. There are five major groups of lipoproteins that are each distinct according to their densities. The higher the ratio of fat to protein, the lower the density. In other words, more fat means lower density. These groups, from least to most dense, are chylomicrons, very low density lipoprotein, VLDL, intermediate density lipoprotein, LDL, and high-density lipoprotein, HDL. All of them are particles that are far smaller than the human cells. Low-density lipoprotein, LDL, also known as bad cholesterol, is one of the five major groups of lipoproteins. LDL molecules are composed of a lipid globule and an apolipoprotein called ApoB. The lipid globule is made up of cholesterol, triglycerides, and other fat-soluble components, e.g. vitamins E and D. Each type of lipoprotein contains a characteristic set of its protein components, called apoproteins. Apoproteins interact with cellular receptors and therefore determine the metabolic fate of lipoprotein particles. They also serve as activators and inhibitors of the enzymes involved in lipoprotein metabolism. Each LDL particle contains a single apolipoprotein B100 molecule, apolipoprotein B100 or ApoB100. B100. 
Lipoprotein A has a striking similarity to the LDL particle we already know. But it is the difference between these two molecules that is critical here. Lipoprotein A differs from LDL through a decisive feature. Its association with an extremely large protein on the surface of the LDL molecule. This surface protein has been named APOA and binds to the LDL molecule during the assembly process in the liver. LPA is a genetic variant of LDL and the most treacherous lipoprotein of all. Its density spans the LDL and HDL range and its concentration in human plasma ranges widely between 0.2 and 120 micrograms per deciliter. LPA has two decisive features that make it a suitable molecule for repairing an artery wall that has been damaged by micronutrient deficiencies. The APOA protein molecule is one of the largest and stickiest molecules in nature. It has a structural homology to plasminogen, one of the most important molecules in the process of blood clot formation and dissolution. Secondly, the LDL component of the lipoprotein A particle provides fats the essential substratus for the growth of new cells within the area of repair. Because of its unique structure, LPA, as opposed to LDL, easily binds to endothelial cells, which form the cellular barrier between the bloodstream and the artery wall, connective tissue components such as collagen and elastin, as well as blood-derived molecules, for instance fibrinogen, fibrin, that are deposited inside the artery walls. An impressive number of independent studies confirm the association between LPA and atherosclerosis. For example, LPA, not LDL, was found to be the primary fat-transporting constituent of atherosclerotic plaques. LPA was found to be present in atherosclerotic lesions in amounts proportional to circulating plasma levels, but it was absent in normal, healthy arterial walls. Both low-density lipoprotein and lipoprotein A seem to play an important role in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. On top of that, LPA was found to be more strongly retained in the arterial wall than LDL. In addition, many studies confirm that LPA promotes blood clot formation and prevents its dissolution as part of the atherosclerotic process. Moreover, LPA was found to facilitate the adhesion of monocytes to the endothelial surface and enhances their migration across the endothelial barrier, a function thus far attributed primarily to LDL. Many studies provide compelling evidence of the relation between LPA and cardiovascular disease. For example, elevated blood levels of lipoprotein A were found to be a causal genetic risk factor for cardiovascular disease. In addition, a variety of studies support the causal role of LPA in coronary disease. Under a wide range of circumstances, continuous, independent and modest associations were found between LPA concentrations and the risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke. In the meantime, many clinical and epidemiological studies have confirmed the value of vitamin C and other micronutrients in the prevention and control of cardiovascular disease. Here are just two examples. A study published in 2003, prospectively examined the relation between vitamin C intake and the risk of coronary heart disease in women, a 16-year follow-up of 118 nurses. Women taking vitamin C supplements appeared to be at lower risk for cardiovascular disease. Another study evaluated the effect of vitamin C on myocardial reperfusion in patients undergoing elective percutaneous coronary intervention or PCI. By means of a prospective single-center randomized study, the researchers aimed at exploring whether antioxidant vitamin C infusion has the potential of affecting the incidence of periprocedural myocardial injury, or PMI, in patients undergoing PCI. The outcome was positive. Pre-procedure intravenous treatment with vitamin C was associated with less myocardial injury. 
Other studies have confirmed that combined treatment with vitamin C and E has beneficial effects on endothelium-dependent vasodilation and arterial stiffness in untreated essential hypertensive patients. The relation of the mortality ratio for all causes of death to increasing vitamin C intake is strongly inverse for males and weakly inverse for females. The key to the control of any disease is its effective prevention. In this case, an adequate supplementation of vitamins has the potential to eliminate micronutrient deficiency, thereby breaking the vicious pathological circle. The following slides will focus on how vitamin C works in preventing cardiovascular diseases. Vitamin C is essential for the production of collagen molecules, the stability structures in our blood vessels and the entire body. As such, it plays a fundamental role in protecting the artery wall stability. Animals produce high amounts of vitamin C in their bodies, which assures optimum amounts of collagen. As a result, their artery walls are protected and stable. Humans, on the other hand, have lost the ability to produce vitamin C and frequently get too few vitamins in their diet. Suboptimal intake, or a lack of vitamin C, impairs the production of collagen molecules, compromising the stability of the artery walls. Collagen a family of proteins comprises about one-third of the total protein mass in the human body. Collagen is most commonly found in the skin, blood vessels, cartilage, bones and connective tissue holding the body cells together and provides structural support, strength and a degree of elasticity to the tissues in combination with elastin. Collagen is a strong, insoluble and fibrous protein made up of three chains of amino acids. The majority of the amino acids in collagen are lysine and proline. Collagen is the main component of connective tissue. As such, it plays an important role in tissue architecture and integrity and tissue strength. Interestingly, an inverse relationship seems to exist between the internal production of LPA and vitamin C, ascorbate. Animals produce high amounts of vitamin C, but they don't produce LPA. Humans produce LPA, but don't produce vitamin C. This inverse relationship can be easily explained based on the role these diverse molecules play in our body. There are two ways to stabilize the connective tissue, and particularly the structure of the artery walls. One involves vitamin C, which is essential for the production of collagen molecules, the stability structures in our body. Animals producing high amounts of vitamin C in their bodies produce an optimum amount of collagen, enough to keep their artery walls protected and stable. We humans, having lost the ability to produce vitamin C in our bodies and frequently getting too little vitamin C in our diets, are prone to an insufficient production and function of collagen reinforcement molecules. Thus, over time, millions of cracks and crevices can develop along the artery walls and their repair becomes necessary. In this situation, lipoprotein A can become a mobile repair molecule, securing the stability of the artery walls. It is interesting that during the evolution of man, LPA surfaced at a time our ancestors had lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C. Therefore, Lipoprotein A could become a functional surrogate for vitamin C in protecting the vascular wall. This slide clearly summarizes the differences between humans and animals with regards to their vitamin body pools. Humans have lost the ability to produce vitamin C and frequently get too few vitamins in their diet. As a result, their body pool of vitamin C is low. Animals, on the other hand, produce 1 to 20 grams of vitamin C a day and often get additional vitamins in their diet which is largely composed of fruits and greens. As a result, they have a high body pool of vitamin C. On the basis of this new understanding of cardiovascular disease, 
We can now answer all key questions of cardiology that thus far had remained unanswered. We develop atherosclerotic deposits primarily in the arteries of the heart and rarely in other organs because the arteries of the heart are exposed to the high mechanical stress of a constant heartbeat. As such, they have the highest demand for micronutrients and micronutrient deficiencies are primarily unmasked there first. Atherosclerotic deposits develop in our arteries and not in our veins because the deficiencies of vitamin C and other nutrients are unmasked earliest in the arteries, which are exposed to a high stress from the pressure of blood flow, causing weakening of the artery wall structure and starting a repair process. Thirdly, cardiovascular disease is essentially unknown in animals because most animals, with a few exceptions, produce vitamin C in their bodies. This assures optimum collagen production and strong elastic arteries. Humans cannot produce vitamin C and with their inadequate dietary intake, the collagen production becomes compromised, leading to a loss of vascular wall integrity. This triggers biological repair mechanisms, resulting in the increased depositing of lipoproteins LPA and LDL and atherosclerosis. Based on the above facts, we can now clearly understand the true nature of atherosclerosis, the cause of heart attacks and strokes. Atherosclerosis is not an arbitrary development, but the result of a biological regulatory process which protects the vascular walls against blood loss. The lipoprotein A molecule is initially a life-saving repair factor for the artery wall, especially when the blood vessels are weakened by a dietary deficiency of vitamins and other micronutrients. If this repair process continues for too long, it overshoots, leading to the formation of atherosclerotic plaques and clogging of the coronary arteries, which might result in a heart attack. Optimum dietary intake of vitamins and other micronutrients assures healthy connective tissue production in the body and protects the artery wall structure. In this situation, the repair function of the lipoprotein A molecules is no longer needed. In the event of existing atherosclerosis, the optimal intake of vitamin C can promote a gradual release of lipoprotein A from the blood vessel walls, thereby decreasing or completely dissolving the arteriosclerotic plaque. Now that we can correctly identify the underlying cause of heart disease, the road to its natural control is wide open.